हरि ओम स्टार्ट द प्रेयर ओम समस्त जन कल्याणी निरत करुणामय नमा चिन्मय देव सद्गु ब्रह्म विद्वर वसुदेवसुत देव कंसचानूरमर्दनम देवकी परमानंदम कृष्ण वंदे जगद्गुरु तमेव माता च पितामे तमे बंधु सखात्मे तमे विद्याद्रविड़मे सर्व मम देवेव गुरुदेव देव हरि ओम वी आर डूइंग दि पंचदशी एट चाप्टर कॉल कूटस्थ प्रकरण कूटस्थ दीप प्रकरण सो वी आर टाक अबउट दि कॉन्शियस्ने आस्पेक्ट द फस्ट फाइव चाप्टर्स ऑफ पंचदशी डील्स विद दि एक्सीस्टेंस सत् आस्पेक्ट ऑफ इट एंड द नेक्स्ट फाइव डील्स विद दि चित् सो सत् चित् आनंद सो ईच वन एज अ फाइव फाइव total 15 chapters has called panchadasi so we are looking at this mantra this uh, the verse 19 swamatram bhasaye taptam swamatram bhasaye taptam loham nanyat kadachana nonya loham nanyat kadachana evam bhasa sahita rutta ruttaya evam bhasa sahita वृत्तय स्वस्वभाषिका वृत्तय स्वस्वभाषिका गृदस्वभाषे तप्त लोहम नान्यत कदाचना भाष सहिता वृत्तय स्वस्वभाषिका सो जस्ट एस दि दे लोहम दि ऐरन ताप्त द रेड 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 हाट ऐरन स्वमात्र भाषेद इट इल्यूमिन्स इट सेल्फ it doesn't illuminate the any objects outside so just as because the 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 vahini the the fire is pervading every part of the iron ball so because it's a red hot iron ball even in a pitch dark room i can see red hot ball because it's illuminating itself the fire that is embedded that pervading the ball is illuminating the ball same way consciousness reflected consciousness reflected by the vritti pervades the whole vritti and therefore the whole vritti vritti means thought is known and the contents of the vritti are nothing but the reflected attributes of the object out there so out there the brahmani that is out there the the consciousness going out through the mind grasping the object forming a vritti is called the 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 vritti vyapti and by that the illumination occurs by the chida bhasa and therefore the object is known but i am the knower and the iron ball is known so the gnyatatvam is knowerness arising in the mind only and that is illumined by the satchi chaitanyam because that is a dominant part whereas in the other case it is a the the dominant part is chidabhasa so whenever i say this is an object this is a part the dominant part is the object that i am perceiving and in every known idam vritti there is a knower spontaneously arising and the dominant part there is the i am a knower i am a knower part is not a knower i am a knower of the part so i am a knower that is being illumined by the consciousness that i am that means satchi chaitanyam is illumining the the knowership gnatatvam is being illumined by the consciousness this is occurring and for every thought and just as the iron ball doesn't illumine the other objects outside the iron ball same way thought that is being illumined by the sida bhasa doesn't illumine other thoughts around so thought by thought i can know i cannot know many thoughts by using one thought so thought is not a deepam that illumines others thought itself is illumined by the deepam which is the consciousness that's why utastha deepam and that illumines the thought also and that's what eva mahabhasa sahita ruttaya ha swasvabhavika ha so because of its the chida bhasa ha illumines the, its swasvabhavika ha and doesn't illumine anything else other than that now we go to kutastha chaitanyam this is about the chida bhasa it illumines only particular thoughts 
So looking at the thought, I can see the reflection of consciousness. And because the reflection consciousness doesn't occur without the original consciousness, I have to shift my attention using Viveka that is behind the reflected consciousness. There is original consciousness that I had to use. That's called Pradibodha Viditam Madam. When the, when the Upanishad says it is known through every thought, every experience, every experience is highlighted by the Chidabhasa. But Chidabhasa itself is due to the original consciousness and that original consciousness is also there. As though it's not dominant that I, if I pay attention to it and neglect the the dominant part and only take the background one then that's called meditation so that's why it's a little difficult because I have to ignore the dominant and see what's behind that's why idam vritti is more difficult whereas aham vritti whereas i ness that arises knower is easier to analyze than the known even though both are pervaded by brahman now we go to the sloka 20. Kamad vichidya vichidya, Kamad vichidya vichidya, Jayante vrutta yokilaha, Jayante vrutta yokilaha, Sarva api viliyante, Sarva api viliyante, Supti, supti murcha samadhishu, Supti murchi samadhishu, together. Kama de vichidya vichidya, Jayante vrutta yokinaha, Sarva api viliyante, Supti murchi samadhishu. Here you see Kama adi. Kama means the uh, desire and Kama, Krodha, Loba, Moha, each is a thought process and Vichitya Vichitya, that means each is individual thought that arises in the mind and even though I may be angry continuously that according to the, the that's the analog signal accordingly you can split into digitized signal because it's occurring continuously as though like in a movie each is a frame but because of speed you think it's a continuity is there and that's what the the digital pictures become analog pictures once in the speed of the continuity and the the sequence is occurring in a slowly therefore you have a continuous show same way kama the vichidya vichidya even though individual thoughts thoughts are i thought one by one one by one arising and this is true for all thoughts whether it's an object thoughts outside thoughts or inside thoughts thoughts occur one at a time and this is the secret of japa yoga see why we'll see, we'll discuss here akilaha rutaya all thoughts kramat it, in, in sequence, vichidya vichidya, each individually, kramad means in sequence they arise, jayante or born. Sarvapi, all thoughts that are arising one by one like a cue. Supti mutsa samadhishu viliyante, they get slowly dissolved into it when in the, in the supti, in the deep sleep state, Murcha, when somebody is unconscious, Samadhishu, in the Samadhi also. In these three, he is giving a three example here. The, the deep sleep state, Murcha, <coughs> when somebody is unconscious, and Samadhishu, when somebody in the Nirvikalpa Samadhi. Or in all these three cases, there are no thoughts arising. Therefore, Viliyante, they are absent. And here, that's what he is essentially. Say sarva api, all thoughts will yamte and that get dissolved in all these three. So in the deep sleep state, in the waking state and the dream state there are thoughts. But in the deep sleep state there are no thoughts. If there are, no, if there are thoughts then you are not sleeping, you may be dreaming. So here the, sus the sushupti is uh, Mandukya Karika defines Nakanchana Kamam Kamayata. There is no desire for any objects because there are no objective thoughts and also there is no internal perception, krodha, anger, all those things will not be there. It is Akanda Akara Agnana Vritti. That is what he is going to discuss in the 11th chapter of Panchadasi. He is going to analyze the Sushupti more exhaustively. But here he says in the Sushupti, in the 
supti, or called sushupti. In the deep sleep state, there are no thoughts. There is no thought. There is no object thought. Therefore, there is no knower thought also. So, knower known thoughts are absent. What is there is essentially agnyanam, ignorance, because the knowledge occurs, occurs from the point of our point whenever there is a thought arises. Knowledge of the thought arises immediately. So, therefore, when there is no thoughts, then there is no knowledge of the thought. Therefore, there is an ignorance and that is called constant ignorance. So, ignorance of what? I may be a chemistry professor or a physics professor, but in the deep sleep state, I do have no knowledge of either chemistry or physics. And there is only what? Ignorance of all knowledge and all, all ignorance also. I don't know that I don't know also. I don't know what I know also. Both are viditamba, avidamba. Both are constant. What? I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. I am neither subject nor an object. And I'm not conscious of my own self as a subject also. Therefore, it is akhanda akar agnana vrutti, undifferentiable ignorance. In the ignorance of, I don't know part, but I know chair. There is a difference of their khandam is there. Whereas in the deep sleep state, all thoughts are gone. Therefore, it is akhandam. And agnanam is, there is no no known thoughts. There is, therefore, it is, a, it is a, the unbroken, undifferentiated subject, object. The ignorance is only there. And that's what is essentially supti. Murcha, murcha means is, is a, uh, unconscious is unconscious means what exactly is the state of unconsciousness it is like a deep sleep state only the mind is as though folded that means he does not have subject object reality and his senses are not functioning and even if they are functioning they are not reporting to the mind therefore the senses as though are dull and therefore he cannot see he cannot hear he cannot do he cannot taste anything because he is unconscious that's all we, we say and samadhi issue and here he is equating in the nirvikalpa samadhi also there are no thoughts this nirvikalpa samadhi vikalpa means thoughts thoughtless state is samadhi that's mind without the thoughts is samadhi so there also there are no thoughts this is viliyante so there also that's why that's what yoga shastra patanjali yoga because you can go to dhyanam and from there you can go to samadhi samadhi means absence of the duality of the thought of the of that but there is no knowledge that aham brahmasmi is not there just because i am in the nirvikalpa samadhi i am going to gain the knowledge knowledge cannot be gained when the mind is calm and quiet so this has to be clear here we will analyze that a little bit because there are a lot of confusion and therefore all thoughts are gone in the in the in the in the in the quietened state so we'll take next one before we analyze it uh, what exactly happens in the samadhi also 21 sandayo kila sandayo kila vrutti nam sandayo kila vrutti nam abhavaschava bhasita abhavaschava bhasita Nirvikare na ye na so, Nirvikare na ye na so, Kutasta iti chochate, Kutasta iti chochate, together Sandayo kila rutti nam, Abhavas chava basita, Nirvikare na yo na so, Kutasta iti chochate, so akila rutti nam, so all the thoughts that are coming in. Sandhyaha injunctions because he said the thought and thought occurs kramat. Kramat means in sequence. One thought and then another thought and then another thought. But they are occurring so fast that you cannot see the sandhi. Sandhi means a gap between the two thoughts. So if there is a gap between the two thoughts, thoughts, silence, thought, silence. If there is a gap between that, sandhyo akila vrutti nam abhavansya so there are no thoughts there akila means there, is, there are no all thoughts there are no thoughts at all because one thought because all th next thought and there is a sandhi in the sandhi there is no thoughts there sandhyaha in the junctions abhavaha absence of the thoughts is known right so ena by which 
nirvikarena by the immutable chaitanyam nirvikarena means by the kotastha chaitanyam vikara that which doesn't go vikara is nirvikara that which is direct sunlight the direct the consciousness chaitanyam avabhasitaha they are illumined the the sandhi the gap between the two thoughts is also illumined by uh, by the pure consciousness of sakshi chaitanyam just as in the previous we said supti murcha samadishu just as the the deep sleep state and murcha the unconscious state and and this nirvikalpa samadhi just as that even when there are thoughts if there's a gap between the thoughts the gap between the thoughts is being illumined by not by the chidabhasa dominantly by chidabha not by dominantly by chidabhasa but by the kutastha chaitanyam so nirvikarena yena asau kutastham iti sochate so chaitanyam kutasa iti uchyate it is said that pure consciousness illumining that so what should i do and this is what japa yoga involves japa yoga means where i am repeating the same thought because if i keep repeating every thought is occurring so fast and they were, they call it in the in the in the kerala they have a the beetle neck be, be, beetle nut trees they are thin and long and you in order to get the nuts you climb the you climb the one and when you go up this is he is dropping all that and your somebody is collecting all those nuts and from there once he drops and clears from the from the from that tree he doesn't come down to go to the next tree because they are so close to each other and each one is a thin enough he swings his this one and jumps to the next tree and like a monkey going from one tree to the other tree and then he collects the nuts so you don't see him he is already somewhere else dropping the nuts so one tree to other tree to other tree is jumping just as a monkey that may not need to come down he is jumping from one tree to other tree to other tree and just the same way one thought to other thought to other thought and therefore because they are occurring so fast it doesn't have there is no gap between the, them gap is so small compared to the thought size thought itself is small but gap is so small that you don't see it and therefore you see you notice only the thoughts continuously rising in the mind that's why people think and one thought to other thought other thought and you half an hour meditation is gone so is om namo narayanaya then om namo narayana you start and then suddenly you remember narayan rao and narayan rao then suddenly remember the amount of money he owes and suddenly you remember the main money you gave and goes on and on and on and on he went to america and then you also go to america with narayan rao and come back half an hour time is over this is this is essentially the wool gathering mind mind that goes out at meditation most of the people i sat there in meditation i am sitting there but the mind has traveled all over the world and came back how by jumping from one thought to other thought to other thought so in order to avoid this where meditation with jumping one thought wool gathering thought what is given is you say you repeat the same thought instead of many thoughts you repeat the same thought i can repeat any thought gaga bubu om gaga bubu om gaga bubu om gaga i can do that suddenly the mind say what is the what the hell is gaga bubu okay what the heaven is gaga bubu for you is hell so what the heaven is gaga bubu so i don't know so mind will start questioning it so instead of that you take the name of the lord where you are given a providing a some field for the for the mind to dwell on at the same time not any other thoughts that are not related to it so essentially say om namo narayanaya om namo narayanaya i am a vaishnavit so i'm saying om namo narayanaya om namo narayanaya om namo narayanaya this becomes a japam and in between the japam there is a gap now and the gap is where by shift my attention from the thought narayana to the gap in between there is a uh, i keep it sri krishna karnamratham by leela leela shaka leela shakudu is a, is a is a great sage and a beautiful uh, karagre was 
ಅಡ್ವಾಜರ್ ಶ್ಲೋಕ ದಿ ನಾಟ್ ಕರಾಗ್ರೆ ಸತಿ ಬಟ್ ಎನಿ ವೇ ಸೊ ದೇರ್ ಇನ್ ದ ಇನ್ ದಟ್ ಇಟ್ಸ್ ಈಸ್ ದಿ ಶ್ಲೋಕ ಸೀಸ್ ಎಸೆನ್ಷಲಿ ಅಂಗನಾ ಅಂಗನಾ ಅಂತರೇ ಮಾಧವ ಸೊ ಇಸ್ ಅ ಜಪ ಯೋಗ ಕ್ಯಾರೆಕ್ಟರೈಸಿಂಗ್ ಜಪ ಯೋಗ ಎಸೆನ್ಷಲಿ ಅಂಗನಾ ಅಂಗನಾ ಅಂತರೇ ರಾಸಲೀಲ ಇಸ್ ಬೀಂಗ್ ಡಿಸ್ಕ್ರೈಬ್ ಬೈ ದಿ ಲೀಲಾ ಶಕ ಸಿಸ್ ರಾಸಲೀಲ ಸ್ಟಾರ್ಟೆಡ್ ದಿಸ್ ಈಸ್ ಅಂಗನಾ ಅಂಗನಾ ಅಂತರೇ ಮಾಧವಂ ಸೊ ಅಂಗನಾ 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 ಸೊ ಗೋಪಿ ಇಸ್ ದೇರ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ದ ಗೋಪಿ ಇಸ್ ದೇರ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಬಿಟ್ವೀನ್ ಗೋಪಿ ದೇಸ್ ಎಸ್ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ದೇರ್ ಸೊ ಯು ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ಸೇ ಸೇಮ್ ಥಿಂಗ್ ಅ ಥಾಟ್ ಈಸ್ ದೇರ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ದ ಥಾಟ್ ಈಸ್ ದೇರ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ದ ಥಾಟ್ ಈಸ್ ದೇರ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಇನ್ ಬಿಟ್ವೀನ್ ದ ಥಾಟ್ಸ್ ದರ್ ಇಸ್ ಅ ಸೈಲೆನ್ಸ್ ದಟ್ ಈಸ್ ವೇರ್ ದ ಕೂಟಸ್ಥ ಚೈತನ್ಯಂ ಇಸ್ ಅಲೋನ್ ಈಸ್ ದೇರ್ ಇನ್ ದ ಥಾಟ್ ವಿ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಅ ಕೂಟಸ್ಥ ಚೈತನ್ಯಂ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಇನ್ ಸೈಡ್ ಎವ್ರಿ ಅಂಗನ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಇಸ್ ದೇರ್ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ಸೊ ಯು ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಎ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಬಟ್ ಯು ಆರ್ ಪೇಯಿಂಗ್ ಅಟೆನ್ಷನ್ ಟು ದಿ ಎಕ್ಸ್ಟರ್ನಲ್ ಅಂಗನ ಎಕ್ಸ್ಟರ್ನಲ್ ದಿ ಗೋಪಿ ದೇ ಫೋರ್ ಯು ಅಟೆನ್ಷನ್ ಈಸ್ ಗೋಪಿ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಗೋಪಿ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಗೋಪಿ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ದಿಸ್ ಇಸ್ ಔ ದ ರಾಸಲೀಲ ಇಸ್ ಗೋಯಿಂಗ್ ಆನ್ ಅಂಗನಾ ಅಂಗನಾ ಅಂತರೇ ಮಾಧವಂ 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 ಅಂತರೇ ಅಂಗನ ಸೊ ಸ್ಲೋಲಿ ಸ್ಲೋಲಿ ಆರ್ ದ ಮೆಡಿಟೇಷನ್ ಇಸ್ ಡ್ಯಾನ್ಸಿಂಗ್ ಗೋಯಿಂಗ್ ಆನ್ ಗೋಪಿ 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 ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಗೋಪಿ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಗೋಪಿ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಅಟೆನ್ಷನ್ ಬೀಯಿಂಗ್ ಶಿಫ್ಟೆಡ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ಗೋಪಿ ಟು ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಸ್ಲೋಲಿ ದಟ್ಸ್ ವಾಟ್ ಬಿಕಮ್ಸ್ ಮೆಡಿಟೇಷನ್ ಈಸ್ ನಾವು ಐ ಆಮ್ ಪೇಯಿಂಗ್ ಅಟೆನ್ಷನ್ ಟು ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಬಿಟ್ವೀನ್ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ದ ಇಸ್ ಅ ಗೋಪಿ ಸೊ ಮೈ ಅಟೆನ್ಷನ್ ಈಸ್ ನಾಟ್ ಆನ್ ದಿ ಗೋಪಿ ಬಟ್ ಆನ್ ದಿ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಸೊ ಮೈ ವಿಷನ್ ಈಸ್ ಕೃಷ್ಣ 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 ಇನ್ ಬಿಟ್ವೀನ್ ಓನ್ಲಿ ಗೋಪಿ ಕಮಿಂಗ್ ಇನ್ ಬಿಟ್ವೀನ್ even though things are not changed my attention is changed therefore says madhavam madhavam antare angana so between the madhava madhava there is uh, angana and when they all the the man the gopis are get tired then they all line up and krishna alone is there in the center they are all dancing around with the central view of krishna alone so that means that is essentially what the description of that uh, sloka is by the lila shakuru there is also another sloka uh, uh, i keep forgetting but it's a beautiful if you go to my website www.advaita forum one word advaita forum dot instead of org if you go to com dot com and there the lila shakuru the, the the sri krishna karnamrutam some of the shlokas are taken and explained and there is also by in the go to google and ask for the chaganti kojeshwar rao chaganti kojeshwar rao is a very great the uh, uh, upanyasaka the one who gives beautiful in telugu only of course and there he he took the sri krishna karnamrutam and essentially beautifully described and also he has done the mahabhagavatam and all that also and i listened to a lot of that sagan to kodeshwar rao it's a beautiful description and bhakti aspect of it involved so here sandayoho between the thought so in the japa yoga my attention is i am repeating the mantra at the same time my attention is between the sandhi only where kotastha chaitanyam is <coughs> is being illumined so an sandayoho akila vrutti nam abhavascha so there is no the the uh, chidabhasa in the in the sandhi in the in between there is no chidabhasa means chidabhasa is there but it is less and more kutastha chaitanyam is dominant sakshi chaitanyam is dominant compared to the reflected consciousness in the other one the reflected consciousness is dominant to kutastha chaitanyam in both cases both are there if chidabhasa is not there this person is dead mind is not even there wherever the mind is there it is there reflection acts to occur and if there is a body then the reflection is expressed in terms of because the body is required for the mind to transact otherwise it will be like a uh, in the dream state i have to create a body not the external body i create a body to transact in the world so in the deep sleep state i have no body also but mind is there quiet voice so there is no experience of sakshi chaitanyam also got to be careful 
So we will go into that analysis a little bit. Nirvikarena ena so kutastha iti uchyate. So nirvikarena, because by the kutastha chaitanyam, it is avabhasita illumined. So this chaitanyam is called kutastha chaitanyam. This is what is called unchanging kutastha. Changing occurring in the thought wise because it depends on the thought. Whereas this is constant reflection, sandhi, background wall is being illumined in spite of one spot, one spot, one spot is coming. We are paying attention to the spots, but in between the two spots there is a gap and that gap is called the sandhi. And in the sandhi also, kutastha chaitan. So when is kutastha chaitanyam is dominant or sachi chaitanyam is dominant in the four cases that he has mentioned, one is the sandhi. That means between the thoughts, if the thought is big enough to, for me to notice. Number two, in the, in the sushupti, in the deep sleep state, there are no thoughts. Therefore, it's only background consciousness illumining what? Illumining the absence of the subject-object duality. So there is an illumination that is a kutastha chaitanyam. And that's called sachi chaitanyam. And the and in the in the murcha also in the samadhi murcha also so there are four cases one is the sandhi then is a sushupti murcha samadhi these are the four cases where the thoughts almost subside and in between only kutastha chaitanyam is there now this is a this is a this is a Yes. statement is being used or similar statements are being used say now what do I need to do to see Kotastha Chaitanyam to, to see Satchi Chaitanyam you remove the thoughts because when there are no thoughts then consciousness the pure consciousness alone is there therefore how do you remove the thoughts whenever the mind is there thoughts are there so what should I do so you suppress the mind so have a mind without the thoughts this is what essentially thoughtless state is where you have pure consciousness. But that may be true because actually the, the truth is the pure consciousness doesn't have even the mind also. And therefore you go beyond the mind. Who is going to go beyond the mind? If somebody is going to go beyond the mind, he should have a mind to go beyond the mind. So uh, even to know that there is no mind, I need a mind. And therefore there is no time where the mind is absent completely. Mind may be folded or mind may not have the thoughts, but mind is to be there. So mind is not just the thoughts, mind is where a locus of the thoughts. So thoughts raises in the mind, thoughts go back into the mind only. So it's not going beyond the mind. And somebody said, he, he is no more mind. That's what I said, people interpret Bhagavan Ramana Maharshi's statement, says, the manasam tukim margane krute naiva manasam there is no mind so go beyond the mind means you have to kill the mind kill the mind by going to thoughtless state you go to thoughtless state every day by going to some of the sushupti so in what way sushupti is different from samadhi or even this called thoughtless consciousness i am not aware of con in the in the deep sleep state i am not conscious of anything there I am only conscious of what? I am only conscious of the absence of everything there, including my own presence also. So therefore, I am not conscious of my own self also there. So I cannot be knowing the self in the deep sleep state because I am not conscious of my own self. So in the samadhi, you are conscious of the self. If I am conscious of the self, where is the instrument to know? I need an instrument for me to be conscious of. So you have to be careful. It's oh, it's self-revealing. It, even if it's self, light is self-revealing, but I have to say there's a light there. So even the light, self-revealing has to be understood properly also. So that statement that I had to go beyond the mind, it's a thoughtless state. All that involves lack of clear understanding what is Advait self-realization involved. Self-realization involves recognition that I am there, whether the thoughts are there, whether thoughts are not there. When the thoughts are less, I may pay attention to more to myself, concentrating on that which is because of which I am able to see the thoughts. 
It's not the thoughtless way. It is because of which I can see the thoughts. But when I'm running from one thought to other thought, I can't even stop, look at the thoughts also. For me, I have to detach myself as though, that means stand apart, who is called Sachi. What is a Sachi? Sachi is another part of the same mind, looking at the thoughts where I am examining, using my Viveka, discriminative intellect, differentiating the two thoughts and differentiating two things that are occurring simultaneously. One is the pure consciousness, another is the reflected consciousness. Both are together because reflection cannot occur without the pure consciousness. And even the mind, when the thoughts in the Sushupti, there is a Chidabhasa there also. Don't say that there is no Chidabhasa in the, in the deep sleep state or in the Samadhi. Even in Samadhi also, there is a the Chidabhasa. What's not there is the disturbing thoughts are not there. Therefore, he's peaceful. True. He's peaceful. Doesn't mean that he has a knowledge of jnanam of that. So, when Swami says, Swami, I think they, they, they are the also, he says, a, a Samadhi without the knowledge is only an ignorant person who is a quiet mind. So, quiet, ignorant person is a Samadhi and quiet, agitated person is a waking state. That ignorance remains unless the mind has the knowledge. So, what happens to the knowledge? Well, knowledge is also not there in the deep sleep state. So, what is there in the deep sleep state? How does a Jnani sleep in the deep sleep state? Jnani sleeps as a Jnani. What is there for him is the absence of this subject-object duality is not there. Therefore, also is Akandakara, Ajnana, but Ajnana is Tula Ajnana because he has already, Mula Ajnana has been eliminated by the Jnanam. So, one have, how does a Jnani sleep and how does Ajnani sleep? Jnani sleeps as Ajnani, Ajnani and Ajnani sleeps as Ajnani. How does a Jnani sleep? Because Jnanam, but Jnanam is not there in the deep sleep state. But if you ask him, he will get up and tell you what, what, what is all about. When he gets up, the mind is there. So what is not there is the mind to express that knowledge of that he has. And that is also covered by the, the deep sleep state because the mind is folded. So mind is folded, both the subject, object, duality is folded. So there is an ignorance of the subject, object, duality. Therefore, what is subject, object, duality? All this transactional world where there is a subject and object duality. In the case of uh, the, the absolute truth, or uh, in the case of self-realization, what is the subject? Subject is same as the object because I know myself. That means self that I am is the subject and self is a knower is also myself. Knower and known are merged together. Therefore, there is no knower duality in the deep sleep state. But that knowledge is not expressed because the mind itself is folded. So, Ajnani sleeps as an Ajnani, Jnani sleeps as a Jnani and Sushupti, absence of thoughts is not a knowledge and therefore going to samadhi is not any helpful other than if a jnani goes into samadhi that's what the scripture says srotavyaha mantavyaha nididhyasitavyaha nididhyasana a meditation after srotavyaha mantavyaha after knowing what is the uh, nature of the absolute and uh, reflecting on it no more doubts and then i can revel on it whether in the samadhi or even outside also i can revel because even with the thoughts also i am there even without the thoughts also i am there there is never a time i am not there even to claim that i am there all the time that's what nidhyasana has been discussed exhaustively in the last chapter seventh chapter so we have to be careful in terms of meditation in the meditation with jnanam is required not meditation without jnanam meditation without jnanam like a like a chitta ekagrata can be developed by meditating on ishvara or something that where single pointed ajyadharaya srotasa samam sarala chintanam virlata param like a ghee pouring i can concentrate on one object or anything whenever you are deeply involved in the subject you are actually meditating only that's why you have no outside 
consciousness, you are deeply involved in the subject, whether you are in a science or when you are watching a movie, serious movie, the movie is going on, but you are deeply involved and your attention is no, no disturbance can disturb you. And that deeply, that means you are in the meditative state there. You are not able to see the screen, you are only seeing the characters running on the light and shades are going on. So meditation, Sitta Ekagrata can be developed and many have that because they have with respect to what they like. And they say people don't have in the studies, we don't have concentration because they don't, they are not paying attention to it only because they have no love for it. Whereas when you have a love for it, you pay attention on deeply as people are watching movies and serials and all that. They are so deeply involved and you cannot really disturb them. That's because of Ekagrata, Chitta Ekagrata is there. But Chitta Vishalata is not there in that. Chitta Vishalata comes only when I can see the presence of the Lord everywhere, not only in the particular uh, the Vigraha, I can, if I start seeing the Lord everywhere, then I expand my mind that seeing the Lord in spite of the names and forms. That's what is the whole Vedanta teaches first. It's called Paroksha Jnanam that Vijayaranya talked about in the seventh chapter. So all that is important. So in the case of the meditation, without the mind cannot be possible. You need the mind to meditate and there's nothing to go beyond the mind. It's only beyond the thoughts only, but thoughtless state is also has to be conscious of. It's not a knowledge cannot take place in the thoughtless. It requires a vicharam. Vicharam means inquiry is required to know what is the truth. That's why Vedanta is very specific. It says, this Adhato Brahma Jignasa. That's how the, the Brahma Sutta starts. Then therefore inquire into in Brahman. How do I inquire? I inquire using the thought process because it is a vichara. So either Brahman inquiry or Atman inquiry. Atma Chet Vijani Yat. So that's why in the whole seventh chapter is, an ex, is the, the explanation of the Brahadaranika mantra of the fourth chapter, fourth Brahmana, twelfth mantra that says, Atman Chet Vijana Yat Aham Asmiti Purushaha. So you have to inquire what is the nature of the self. In fact, it is a video. You have to inquire. Who is the inquirer? The inquirer has to inquire about the inquirer. How do you inquire? First using the Vedanta that points out in the direction. How does it point out? It is the mind of the mind. It is the eye of the eye. It uses a strange language because Navagachati Namanaha. Neither mind can go there, not the war. At the same time, the scripture is telling you what it is without knowing what it is. So it can only point in the direction for one to contemplate and inquire. And that's what the inquiry, when it's a mind of the mind and the eye, eye of the eye, and that which essentially says, this is that yachurana vasyati, yena chakshum sapasyati, tadeva brahma tvam viddi, nedam yadidam upasati, yan manasana manute, yena hur manomatam, tadeva brahma tvam viddi, nedam yadidam upasati, yasroni yasrotri na nasrunoti, yena sotra midam sotam, tadeva brahma tvam viddi, nedam yadidam upasati. That Tadeva Brahma Tombiddi Nedam Nidam Upasati. That alone is Brahman, not this, that, what you are worshipping. Up to worshipping, up to that, think about that Brahman. Now go beyond that to the next level and see that because of which the mind, eyes cannot see. But that because of which eyes have a capacity to see. Because of the Chidabhasa reflected, life is there. What is that life? Life is nothing but conscious. You are a conscious entity, only can see. Unconscious entity cannot see. What is that conscious entity that makes the eyes see? That is the life of consciousness. That is the all-pervading consciousness expressing through the 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 in the, the, the to the sense organs as chaitanyam and therefore aham vaishvanaro bhutva praninandeha masrita i am as a vaishvanara i am in all jivas is expressing in terms of prana apana vyana udana samana all physiological functions are because of me and that's what is krishna says and that is the pure consciousness that is being expressed there all that is implied
So we will go to the next sloka 20, 22 because I want to make sure that when you say it is going beyond the mind, it is objectless awareness. Objectless awareness occurs in terms of where there are no objective thoughts. So what is there? Mind is still there. Without the mind is still there, objectless awareness cannot be aware, one cannot be aware of. So therefore, it is not without the mind. Without the mind is only Brahman and the Brahman does not need to realize. Because he is a Brahman, there is no question of Ajnanam and Jnanam in the Brahman. It's only uh, in the Vyavaharika that all these things are taking place. And therefore one has to be careful in this wording and the knowledge that, oh, this is beyond the mind, I go beyond the mind and I have seen something. If you have seen that, who is a seer? So even the J.K. Krishnamurti, uh, that whole how he got involved. This is, you observe the mind. So mind is conditioned. How do I decondition the mind? Observe the mind. Who is the observer? Again mind. So mind is observing the condition of the mind. So mind is, a, is the one who is the culprit. Now how am I going to, I cannot, I am the mind only. So how am I going to separate myself from the mind that is being observed? Again mind has to separate. So if I am separating, what is there to observe for me? So it is a mind has to split one as a subject and the object and I have to identify with the subject and detach myself with the objective thoughts and that is not easy. That's why you need a karma yoga, jnana yoga, upasana yoga, all those yogas is only so that I can purify the mind so that I can see my own mind. Where I am a seer, thought can be arisen and pointing in the direction that because of which I can see that yeah, Atshunsi is a seeing outside and also knowing also comes under Yan Manata Manasa Manuti Enahur Manomatam Tadeva Brahma Tvambiddi Nedam Yadidam Upasati all that is being implied and therefore one has to be careful in terms of is going the beyond the mind is, is a objectless awareness and meditation is all that is you have to know what is Brahman through Vedanta Vichara only. Is Vedanta necessary? Yes, it is necessary. Is Vedanta necessary and sufficient? It is necessary and sufficient provided the mind is well prepared. Otherwise, it is necessary but not sufficient. Sufficiency comes when the preparation of the mind is required because you still have Ragadveshas that has to be eliminated. With that, we will stop and go to the Sloka 22 after we come back. Om Purnamada Purnamidam Purnat Purnamudachate Purnasya Purnamadaya Purnameva Vasishyate Om Shanti 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 Harihi Om Sri Guru Bhyo Namaha Harihi Om